Bob Chapman for joining us in the Power Hour today. Well, thank you. This is the alleged Bob Chapman. <laughs> Joining us on the alleged Power Hour radio show. <laughs> no kidding. It's getting... By two alleges. <laughs> yeah, it's too stupid. It's too stupid for understanding. You know, an exactly. alleged brick, an alleged brick fell from the highway and killed... <sighs> it's just, it just is, uh, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, we are so glad to have you joining us, though, today and uh, making sense out of... I don't know if where you live, you've been seeing nonstop... Uh, captain of a ship who was taken hostage. Have you been seeing that in your area of the country? It goes all over the world. It uh, generated by uh, both European and American uh, news services. Does anybody and, not uh, think that there's something wrong with seeing five days of one guy taken hostage? I mean, is this a little bit much or something? Well, you know, another thing that uh, interests me uh, is that on the vessel that of the United States Navy that was following these people, allegedly, you like that, huh? <laughs> um, these uh, three of these uh, miscreants, uh, criminals, were shot by sharpshooters. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many of you out there have ever been aboard a, a vessel of any kind with just a two or three foot roll mm -hmm. in the waves and you try hitting something with a rifle mm -hmm. it is extraordinarily difficult i mean even at thirty feet with a small roll uh... firing an ak or an ar at a coconut i mean you won't even get close well you know at first they said well out in the real ocean it gets real calm there and i thought what are you what are you thinking? Don't you watch uh, uh, Dangerous Catch or whatever anyway on television? And then they came back and they said later, yeah, there had been a really dangerous uh, uh, waves out there. And, I mean, the story kept changing depending on what they needed to do. I don't want to deal with that except for to say I think the real story is that the people in Somalia are starving. And this youngest guy that did live through this ordeal is 16 years old, 87 pounds, and probably desperately hungry uh, because the Somali people have no food there. And they've been da dropping dangerous uh, nuclear waste in the area. And I think that probably is why they're standing up and saying, get away from our shores. And they're trying to protect their own shores. But we'd never hear that side of the story, though democracy now did cover it. But anyway, but let's look at what's going on in the financial sector today, because gold is way down. Good time to buy gold. Oh, um, Joy, stop, stop. It's up $15. I thought it was 803 this morning. It was. It it's already, changes by the second. Yeah, it's already up fifteen dollars. So, wow! This is very unusual for Monday morning to have a very strong gold market. So there must be some nasty things going out on, on out there that we know, don't know about yet. And the stock market is down prior to the opening, which is in fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. which is also very unusual. Usually, our government is in there propping the market up early on. Mm -hmm. I propped it up in Europe. I'm looking at the, the FTSE up 58, the CAC up 38, and 132 to the upside on the DAX in Frankfurt. So something weird is going on out there. But the, it looks like the U.S. market is going to open up uh, 50 points or more lower and goes up. So it, it's an unusual Monday. Yeah, it really is an unusual Monday, and I'm just looking at this and thinking uh, uh, there's no way to predict. Uh, there's no way to predict. I think you've done the best job, though, in following it. But I did I did want to mention, though, that I heard on uh, CNBC or CNBW they were talking about the importance of, of uh, seeking a safe haven, and the safe haven, they said, was gold. There's no question about it right now. Now, this is a foreign guy. I think he was from Japan or someplace on there, but he said the, the only safe haven, the only place I would put my money right now with gold and of course they have this oh but it is so unstable and it can go up and down and well yeah but how about the market yeah no kidding it's like a zoo uh, incidentally uh, on yesterday sunday issue of the standard uh from vienna um they had an article about the rich and they they were they were pointing towards europe uh, the rich are fleeing to gold and have been for about the last year and taking physical delivery. And so that's why there's so few coins and gold bars around, because people who normally have not participated since 
perhaps uh, the late 1970s and early 80s are back in the market again, if they're still alive, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're buying. And so uh, this is a major newspaper, which would be uh, compared to uh, uh, the Tribune de Genève or uh, the Frankfurt Algemeine or the Financial Times of London. So this is a big story. Yeah, it's a huge story. Well, let's talk about, you know, the diversions that are on television. We know those, the uh, Madoff, the, that guy's still in the news. That's another agenda that, you know, he allegedly stole, you know, a gazillion dollars from the people around the world. And now they're trying to get him to commit bankruptcy. And he's probably going to get off, you know, you know, six months in prison on probation or something and go live in, you know, high rise in Miami. But, I don't, you know, I'm so jaundiced by listening to the financial news on television because everybody right now this fox program after hours in a bar is just like drives me crazy they're all so excited it is it is absolutely it disgusting it is just disgusting i saw uh gerald uh Salente, uh interviewed there and i said you know that's not fair why well, it's not a, a proper place to do that. Oh, you mean it's not fair? I thought you meant it's not fair that you couldn't be there. It's not no, fair no, no. that he. It's not I'll fair. I'll never be there, but that's okay. Yeah. But no, uh, it was a good interview, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that it's not the place to do it. No, it isn't. Hey, by the way, you've heard a lot about Peter Schiff on TV, the financial advisor to Ron Paul. You've heard about him? Yes. Do you know who his father is? Yes. Most people don't I know, know that. I know a great deal about his father because. I was involved since the early 1960s in the tax movement, and his father led with his head and ended up in jail. But and most Peter's people would very, not. Peter's a very nice man. Uh huh. And uh, I've spoken to him several times in the past. Well, let me just add most people don't know, though, that Peter Schiff, who we have had on here speaking many, many times on the program, is the son of Erwin Schiff who is an 87-year-old man who's now serving a lifetime prison sentence, or will be his lifetime prison sentence pretty much. So I think that's just really amazing that this man has taken such a stand, given the fact that his father is such a high-profile figure in that movement. I just I have to commend Peter Schiff for getting out there and doing what he's doing. I agree with you completely. Um, there's, there's a part of the mosaic I don't think he sees, and that is the the interests of the Illuminists, and uh, that's really what takes it and brings it all together. And um, it's sort of like the missing link. But uh, he's certainly been out front, and he's uh, an excellent spokesman. He really is. I want to uh, go back to this uh, information that I received from one of our listeners today. He was a broker in real estate, and you may have heard me talk about this, but it said that... Yeah, I heard the story earlier. Okay. What do you think about going and signing a document that says if you're one day late, you're in default? Had you heard about this? I, I have not. You know, I wrote an article about five years ago, and in there I outlined how Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were being looted. And it was official policy of both parties to allow it to be looted uh, as um, as political largesse, so to speak. And I also said that both of them, and everybody in Washington knew this, were bankrupt. Well, finally, four years later, they went into bankruptcy and the government took them over. At that time, I had said the only alternative to what is going to happen is that approximately – Half the people in America who don't own their homes, they own in conjunction with some lender, which more often than not is insured by Fannie or Freddie. And I think that the government wants to possess all of the homes that are not paid for in total. And that would allow them to herd people all over the place and do what they wanted to with them. And uh, I think that that's what this is coming to. Uh, you don't put a legal phraseology in there like that unless you want people's homes. My goodness, Tracy. That's right. The, uh, the, 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 the mail could be late and, and the payment couldn't arrive and they're knocking on your and door. And you're homeless. Kicking yeah. it in. Hey, by the way, when we get back in this break, I want you to go over, you did so well in your latest newsletter about the Madoff stolen funds that have not surfaced. I'd like to talk about this Madoff Ponzi scheme and uh, the Israeli bank, etc. We'll be right back. 